Our solar system is home to more than 290 moons, predominantly orbiting the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn. Among them, Earth stands out with its solitary prominent natural satellite, the Moon. However, this big, bright gray companion may not be the only natural object orbiting our planet. Since the 19th century, several astronomers have claimed to have discovered additional moons orbiting Earth. One such claim came from the French astronomer Frédéric Petit in 1846, who announced the discovery of a second moon. Despite gaining attention at the time, his claim was dismissed due to the implausible proximity he proposed, only 11.4 kilometers from Earth roughly the cruising altitude of commercial airliners. Later, in 1898, German scientist Dr. Georg Waltemath claimed to have identified not only a second moon, but also a system of tiny moons orbiting Earth. His assertions, too, failed to gain validation and were ultimately considered false. Even Clyde Tombaugh, the discoverer of Pluto, investigated the possibility of a second moon, but concluded in 1959 that he had found nothing of the sort. Given these historical accounts, it appears Earth might only have one moon, but a deeper examination reveals a more complex and intriguing story. When Earth first formed approximately 4.5 billion years ago, it had no moons, According to the giant impact hypothesis, a Mars-sized protoplanet known as Theia collided with the nascent Earth. This colossal impact ejected vast amounts of debris into space, which eventually coalesced to form the Moon. This event not only created our current Moon, but also possibly led to the formation of a companion Moon early in Earth's history. Some astronomers speculate that such a secondary moon might explain certain asymmetrical features of our moon, specifically the flat, volcanic scarred near side compared to the mountainous and heavily cratered far side. Although this companion moon hypothesis remains speculative and other processes can account for these lunar features, it opens the door to considering Earth's historical and current potential for hosting additional moons. While the notion of Earth having multiple moons was historically fraught with mistaken claims and unconfirmed discoveries, recent decades have unveiled new, intriguing objects orbiting our planet. In 1991, astronomers spotted a small object that was initially thought to be a piece of NASA's Apollo hardware. Further analysis, however, indicated that it was of natural origin. This object, designated 1991 VG, became known as a sort of second moon due to its temporary gravitational binding to Earth. Unlike our permanent moon, 1991 VG was only about 10 meters in diameter and remained in Earth's orbit for a few months before escaping. This discovery marked it as one of the first observed mini-moons, or temporary satellites of Earth. Temporary moons, or mini-moons, are small objects that are captured by Earth's gravitational field for short periods. These objects eventually either leave orbit or collide with Earth. Historical observations suggest that these transient satellites have been around for a long time. For instance, in 1913, a mysterious parade of meteors lit up the skies over Canada, the northeastern United States, and Brazil. Known as the Great Meteor Procession of 1913, this event remains unexplained but some astronomers theorize that it could have been a short-lived natural satellite of Earth that partially burned up in the atmosphere. These temporary moons, while often small and fleeting, challenge the notion that Earth has only one moon and reveal a dynamic orbital environment influenced by Earth's gravity. In addition to these temporary moons, other interesting objects are found in orbit around Earth. 
One notable example is the so-called ghost moons, or Kordilevsky clouds. These are dust clouds that orbit Earth along the same path as the moon, albeit too faint to be seen with the naked eye. First reported in 1961, these ghost moons remained a matter of controversy for nearly 60 years until their existence was confirmed in 2018. The Kordilevsky clouds are enormous, nearly nine times wider than Earth, and consist of individual particles estimated to measure just a micrometer across. The sunlight reflecting off these particles makes them glow faintly, but their tenuous nature and diffuse composition mean they barely qualify as moons, despite orbiting Earth. Apart from temporary moons and ghost moons, Earth also hosts quasi-satellites, or quasi-moons. These are space rocks that appear to orbit Earth due to their similar orbital period around the Sun. Quasi-moons do not follow Earth's orbit directly, but complete a full orbit around the Sun in the same amount of time as Earth, creating the illusion of being in Earth's orbit. They are more influenced by the Sun's gravity than by Earth's, yet they remain in a consistent gravitational relationship with our planet. Another intriguing category of objects associated with Earth are Earth's Trojans. Unlike traditional moons or quasi-moons, Trojans share Earth's orbit around the Sun but occupy stable points known as Lagrange points. These are positions in space where the gravitational forces of Earth and the Sun, combined with the orbital motion, create points of equilibrium. Objects located at Lagrange points can stay there with minimal energy input because the forces are balanced. Currently, only two Earth Trojans have been discovered, residing at Lagrange point L4. These objects are relatively small, with one measuring about 400 meters across and the other around one kilometer in diameter. Despite their size, they hold potential significance for future space exploration and resource utilization. The concept of Lagrange points extends beyond just hosting Earth's Trojans. These points have practical applications for space missions, providing stable positions for satellites and space telescopes. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, for example, is stationed at Earth's Lagrange Point L2, allowing it to maintain a stable orbit relative to both Earth and the Sun while using minimal fuel. This position enables the telescope to conduct continuous observations without the interference of Earth's shadow, providing valuable insights into the distant universe. The exploration of Earth's potential additional moons and related objects underscores the evolving understanding of our planet's gravitational influence and orbital dynamics. For generations, astronomers have speculated about the possibility of Earth having more than one moon. While our permanent natural satellite, the Moon, remains the most significant, the discovery of mini-moons, ghost moons, quasi-moons, and trojans reveals a more complex orbital landscape. These objects, although varied in nature and behavior, demonstrate that Earth's gravitational field interacts with a diverse array of space phenomena, from transient captures to stable co-orbital relationships. As technology advances and our observational capabilities improve, the study of these objects continues to provide valuable insights into Earth's place in the cosmos. The potential for future missions to explore and utilize these small celestial bodies offers exciting opportunities for space exploration, resource extraction, and scientific research. Whether by sending robotic probes to investigate many moons or developing techniques to harness the resources of Earth's Trojans, humanity stands at the threshold of a new era in understanding and interacting with the many objects that share our orbital space. In conclusion, Earth's moon may be the most prominent and permanent natural satellite, but it is far from the only object influenced by our planet's gravity. 
From historical claims of additional moons to the modern discovery of temporary mini-moons, ghost moons, quasi-moons, and Trojans, the narrative of Earth's moons is both complex and fascinating. These discoveries challenge the traditional view of our planet's solitary moon and reveal a dynamic system of objects that orbit, interact, and coexist with Earth. As we continue to explore and understand these celestial companions, we gain a deeper appreciation for the intricate gravitational dance that shapes our cosmic neighborhood. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.